please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Go to the f gym. Hello everyone, this video is a direct follow-up to Wednesday's video, talking about Amber's second failure at Ozempic, or semaglutide as she seeks the third alternative. This time we're going to talk about the relationship stuff, because she ended the month of June by talking about a breakup. For those who follow Amber, she has been talking about seeing somebody for a while claiming that they bought her gifts at Christmas, or Moistmas as we call it here. Valentine's Day, in fact, as well. What separated this YP, though, from previous YPs, including, uh, what was her name, uh, YP2 Electric Boogaloo, the one she used to live with in whatever state she was last in, was it Kentucky? There. Is that this one was never in videos. You never heard anything about them, you never saw anything about them. This is completely different. Now this could be an indicator that Amber learnt the lessons of Destiny and Becky, and removed her partner from the content, but as we saw with the Nontent era, as it's still in full swing, she needs a muse in her videos or she suffers. She needs that second person not only to do chores for her, but so that they can provide suitable ambience in the background when Amber has nothing to offer, even if they don't want to be in the videos like Becky and Destiny really didn't want to be. Although now Amber's mother is now fully featuring in content, I'm inclined to believe Amber will seek to try to be more proactive in a particular area, for a time, until she and her mother fall out. We'll focus though on this relationship thing because she started, or ended June, with the video We Broke Up, I Feel Sick and Going to a Birthday Party vlog. The top comment on that, Amberlynn in a week. So I'm talking to someone? If you didn't know what that's about, uh, the inflection thing in her voice aggravates everyone. Minus that, like I've had a really good day with friends and family, um, but I am pretty sad about something. And a lot of you definitely have guessed it. God. I have an easier time admitting when like I something up versus like the person that I was in love with it up so it's like i don't i just don't even want to like go there discuss it talk about it because it's like a lot and i don't know it's just easier to keep things like this off a line but like so many of you have guessed it the fascinating thing about this the uh, lead up right is amber doesn't want to tell you what's happened because that's what she does in a lot of her content she wants to do it on her terms this is her terms but not her terms which is a rather unusual thing for a vlogger to do on her TikTok, she posted what you're seeing on the screen being looped. I would include the audio, but all her content at present is her pulling the exact same facial expression, lip syncing some crap. It's, it's beyond cringe at this point. And what the Fraggle Rock are aura points? Since you've cheated on people in the past, I am very curious about that. And I'm just going to keep hurting privately and I'm just gonna let it stay that way because I don't wanna sit here and talk about it. I don't, so that's not what's gonna happen on this channel, so. I just wanna continue being happy, independent as I can be, and sticking to my weight loss. So this TikTok really doesn't do you any favors. The fact it's still up on your TikTok is another one of those rather fascinating statements of clearly you're a hypocrite, but you also understand there's no point you deleting it, you may as well milk it. And boy, did you milk it with this one video alone. Alluding to, but never directly addressing. Typical Amberlynn read at this point in her non-tent era. Trying to make it seem like there's something more going on. It's quite simple, really. You're not seeing someone that no one thought you were seeing in the first place. Now, these lies continue into the second video, the first of the month, titled, Here is what really happened. Getting my first mammogram chicken chip taste test. Right, vlog. Okay, comments again not on her side, but they haven't been since the Belgian contingent were there last January. But yeah, it was just, it was really quick. The lady who actually uh, did my mammogram, she was probably 
in her late 20s and she was just so sweet and as i was leaving she was like i don't want to make this awkward and i'm definitely not hitting on you but you are really beautiful and i just i don't know it like made my day because she was just like you have such a pretty face and i don't know things like that like mean a lot to me i can promise you this amberlyn non-tent read no one believes your comments certainly lend credence to that that upon having your mammogram, the person doing the mammogram decided to tell you how beautiful you are. No, 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 and I really do hope this isn't YP number four in the making. Within Amber's content, she gets more compliments in real life than she does get positive comments in her YouTube videos. I call sus on all of this. In video number three, or five, she talks about her ex. This is an interesting video because I was curious to see if there were any interactions with the ex. I believe this is YP, I think, the one that drove her to the state she's in, that one. Feline, is that it? If it isn't, I'll correct myself later. Hello, hello, so it is actually the next day, June 29th. Video released on July the 2nd. Now this is important. Amber has been building up content, and that's what she does. She builds up over a period of weeks, and then she has a buffer, as she likes to call it. I understand that fully. In the context of Amber, though, this buffer is going to disappear at a point, which means that where many believed it would be one week or two weeks before something changes, yes, there'll be a change in the next video, don't worry, the change is not as close together as many think because of those upload dates. I'm not vlogging today. So nothing new there then. So I want you guys to know that I am okay. The video about my breakup did go up yesterday and I'm getting a lot of DMs and I'm good. I've had a lot of people say, just spill the tea because we don't know Valentine's real name. We know nothing about Valentine and that is very true. To be honest, there is much about that person we know nothing about. The same can be said for the predecessor, right? Because you kept so much of it back on purpose to try and make things seem more important than they were or like there was something more to it than it really was. In reality, we all know what's happened, you just won't admit any of it. There seems to be a recurring theme with obese creators of late, refusing to accept reality or responsibility. In my last serious relationship, it was with Feline, and you guys know a little bit more of her because she would talk in my videos, you'd see her hands, her legs, body parts. So there was a little bit more like personal to personal with you guys in that regard. Yes, and I have no doubt if you don't leave her the F alone, she'll more than likely expose you in the YouTube video in the near future. I'm going to skip slightly further ahead to some of the burning questions we need to know about. The first one of which is hilarious. How did you guys meet? Did you guys meet in person? So she actually messaged me on Instagram back in September and we always had like a flirty thing. Uh, we always had crushes on each other and then it wasn't until I would say December, January where my feelings started to get super deep while hers was already there. It took me a hot minute to get to that point and then it was February, February 14th to be exact. She asked to be my girlfriend and no, we never met in person, but we would video call every single day. I'm going to pick my words very carefully here because I don't want someone to misunderstand this. But are you saying that your crush, your Valentine, is somebody you never met in person. You spoke in many videos since that Valentine's video where she bought you that Lego, the Bat Cave, I believe. You spoke about how much you love her. You were saying that early and quickly. I'm not saying there is a limit to how far you can express yourself, but I do believe when it comes to you and your relationships, you just fall in love. The moment someone gives you attention until you are bored of them. You've now piqued my interest because I thought Valentine was in the sooner state with you. You also mentioned that you did video chat, so I guess this could be argued to remove, as a point, the argument of catfishing. Although since you do the um, fat girl photo angles all the time, yes, I noticed, um, you are definitely a catfisher. I knew that she loved me a lot, but there was a lot of things that she did lie to me about. This is where it's like, I mainly don't want to share these things because I am embarrassed that I had someone who loved me that hard but would lie to me and betray me and do the things they did to me. Like I just feel embarrassed to even admit it so it's like I don't even want to go there. Amber, what's not helping you here is you're looking to the side and up. Uh -huh. you, you're, you're telling a lie. You want to tell us but you want to stretch it out a bit. That's what you're trying to do. You're in your era of non-tent and you know less is more for you 
However, you're in now a position where less is yielding less. So you might have to start showing your hands. I don't mean literal hands. I mean what's in your hand that you're apparently holding onto, these lives, right? But let's just say, like, she hurt me pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna intentionally leave that part of the conversation so we can move on to another part, because we're gonna circle back to this clip in a bit. You'll understand why. Consider it foreshadowing. Have you spoken to Valentine since you broke up? After we broke up, we wanted to try being friends, but that did not work out at all. The last time that I talked to her was, like, maybe two weeks ago. But the last time she contacted me was she sent me a screenshot of a TikTok I posted, and she was pretty upset about it. I'm going to go ahead and assume it is this one, because, let's face it here, you clearly wanted to talk about it, but you've used Valentine to make some content at Valentine's expense. It's a bit of a shitty move, without anyone knowing the full context, because you're refusing to share it. I guess this video, which is the fourth in the five videos we've got, doesn't help you because of what you answer later, which I should probably play now. Are you talking to someone new? <laughs> yes, I am. So how soon before they move in together and the new Amberlynn nonsense arc begins? People complain this was in the space of two weeks, and the strange thing is, it's probably closer to three, if you include the last week of June and the first week and a half of this month. It's really odd because of when she makes the videos to when she uploads them. But do ignore the coy delivery of that remark. Hers, not mine, I know, no. But I do fully expect after she's kind of crapped on Valentine for Valentine Mark II to be a massive upgrade and for Amber to lose a little bit of weight and then to immediately regress a couple weeks later while citing Valentine Mark II as invigorating her in her Ozempic struggles. What was the date you and Valentine broke up? It was one day after our four month anniversary. I broke up with her on June 15th. When was the last time you had sex? So the last time I had like physical sex with somebody, it's a really weird way for me to word it, but it was September. I'm very much that girly pop where I can't have sex with someone unless I love them or I'm like... The comments around your breakup with Valentine are interesting, but let's face it, they're novel because we know nothing really. The comments about your um, sex life are interesting because that would more than likely coincide either with a regression with uh, Feline or when you cheated on Feline. Did Valentine troll you? No, this is one of the ones that was a very popular question. A lot of people thinking that Valentine trolled me. She was actually a hater. She was this or that. No, that is not true. A thousand percent genuine in what we had. But again, that was just like a part of the life she was living. Amber spends the next minute and a half reeling off all this marvelous, wonderfully concocted, fabricated story about who Valentine really was and how the story doesn't align. It's quite tedious because Amber yet again is trying to elude and not provide too much. She's teasing the audience with tidbits, but nothing concrete. This is all to me a load of assertive bollocks. Unless you, the plonker telling the story, are willing to actually provide information, you're not even coming close to spilling what is charitably considered tea. You're at best dipping a tea bag in someone's mouthful of saliva and presenting that to a customer. This level of nonsense is what Amber does, and it's why many people are turning off. It's why her viewership is going down, it's why she has to rely on TikTok and cameos to fluff her income. She's just too arrogant and prideful to realize this is her career in its twilight. The final video I want to show you is the more recent video she's put out, titled Meeting My Girlfriend in Person. It's a 4th of July video, basically, released on July the 9th, because, yeah, she's doing that now, guys. And nearly nine minutes in, we get the part that we need to make the points I'm trying to make in this video. Okay guys, so there's something that I want to tell you about. I know it's like really soon and sudden, like I understand that, but timelines are not a thing and you guys know that with me. Amber proceeds to spend the next minute explaining chemistry to you by pointing out some couples be together for years and get married eventually, some get married very quickly, stay together forever. It's all about that chemistry, but she defined it as a timeline, how they're not the same. She felt differently with Valentine as opposed to now. I say that because of the following. I have a girlfriend. Yes, I do. Oh, it's true. 
It's damn true. And we are in a long distance relationship. I want to just like share this side of me. I'm not a secret. I don't think anyone believes that you're a secret. Long distance relationship is an amusing one because I can't believe you'd be catfished by literally anyone for the bants. I don't believe you're a secret. I believe you think you're a secret. Your likes dislike ratio in all your videos would certainly not back up the belief that you're a secret. Although I'm sure many would argue that perhaps they're ashamed to be with you. That's why they're a secret. Was that a bit too harsh? Nah. And I feel special. I feel loved. I feel important. I feel like a priority. Like those aren't feelings that I've felt for a very long time. Like I feel genuinely seen like as a person, we will be meeting in person literally before this month is even over. Like, plane ticket bought, like all planned out. And I am thoroughly so excited. This all reminds me of the garbage you fed us when you first started dating Feline or Wipey Take Two Electric Boogaloo. That same level of giddiness. I could believe that you're wearing a ring on your wedding finger, which you are wearing a ring there because you've already somehow over text message gotten engaged. You misuse the word love all the time. You are just chronically dependent on being in a relationship to exist, which is how you've managed to go from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship. I could believe also after this flight and meeting up, I could believe that you would move in with them instantly, either leaving the sooner state to live with them or have them come live with you. If they're interesting enough, I could imagine you ditching your mother in a heartbeat. But the idea of you having two side characters in your own little chronicle is more beneficial to you, isn't it now? Even if one is not on camera. Like in the past, like I see red flags. When you look in a mirror, when you see the receipt for all your target U-Hauls, when you take delivery of your delivery, or is it Uber Eats? Do you see it when you shout the word bingo? If it wasn't obvious enough, yes, I'm basically saying Amberlynn Reed is a red flag. A quarter ton red flag. In relationships, I have red flags. People have red flags. It's a thing. But when I would see the red flags, I would admit like, oh, that is hardcore red flag. Or, oh, that's uh, that's triggering my BPD. Or, oh, wow, this relationship is making my mental illness actually worse. Like, I see these things and it's like, I get so like delusional. That is a lot of words for stuff you literally never do, except for the last part. So I'm going to simplify this down and use it as the last point for this video to the following statement. I get so like delusional. Go to the gym. Go to the gym.